Welcome to my Get Google Ready series for 2025. And this is a series that I release every year where I take you through not only how to correctly set up your Google Ads campaigns, but also how to optimize them in the right way. Let's be honest, every year there are changes in Google Ads and 2024 has been no different. There has been a whole heap of different changes that have meant that we've had to slightly adjust how we set up and how we optimize our Google Ads campaigns. So if you are a beginner, or you've been doing Google Ads for a long time, you're gonna get a lot of useful and practical tips on what is working in Google Ads right now. What I share throughout this playlist is the strategies that are used for campaigns that are spending you know, from $1,000 a month all the way up to over $750,000 a month. So these principles which I'm gonna take you through will work regardless of what stage in your business you're in. What I wanted to do in this first video is to take you through the core four factors that you need to understand about how Google Ads work. Now, we're not going to be going doing a massive deep dive into the algorithm but what I do want to do is I just want to give you the core understandings of what you need to understand so that you can then create the best campaigns for your business. Now before we get into those four core elements one of the big things that you do need for success with Google Ads is that you need a correct optimization strategy for your business. Not optimizing your Google Ads campaigns is the fastest way to just hand Google free money and say goodbye to your business profits. But on the other hand over optimizing your campaign can be just as detrimental to your business. And that's why it's important that you have a systematic approach to optimizing your Google Ads campaigns where you are reviewing data, making optimizations, and then waiting for the next round of data. So that's why with my Google Ads optimization checklist, I don't only list all of the tasks that you need to complete, but also gives you a guide of how often you should be completing these tasks. Now, if you've got any of my previous Google Ads optimization checklist, I do need to stress that this is my updated checklist for 2025. And it also includes the six major campaign types they're gonna be teaching you throughout this series, which is their Google search campaigns, shopping campaigns, performance max, display, video, and demand gen. So if you wanna get access to that checklist, just follow the link in the description below. All right, with all that said, the first thing that you need to understand about Google Ads is how the auction in Google Ads works. Now, most people will be familiar that Google Ads is based on an auction, but the auction operates different in that the highest bidder doesn't always win. So for example, like a house auction, you pay the most money, you get the house. Whereas for Google Ads, it works on a system called your ad rank. And this has been changing over time and it used to be just based on CPC and your bid and your quality score. Now there's other elements that take into place and it's actually six core elements. So to explain these properly, let's jump into a screen share so I can take you through the six factors that determine your ad rank. What I wanna take you through here is the factors that determine your ad rank. And the first thing is your bid. And I'm just gonna give you the definitions of these and this is the maximum amount that you are willing to pay per click. Now this can be set manually, but it can also be set automatically when you're using automated bidding strategies like maximize clicks or maximize conversion or maximize conversion value. Now for those automated bidding strategies, later on in this playlist, I am gonna be doing a whole lesson on that. But essentially what happens with an automated bidding strategy is that Google controls your cost per click, so the maximum amount that you're willing to pay based on to achieve your goal. So I'll do a whole lesson later within this playlist where we talk more about automated bidding strategies. But essentially that's the first element that determines your ad rank. So remember Google Ads is based on an auction, so there is definitely amount of how much you're willing to pay. And this is sometimes why you can see a big variance between different business niches. There can be some business businesses where you may be paying only a dollar cost per click to win an auction, whereas for other businesses, it can be up you know, well above $100. And that's because it all comes down to the amount of advertisers and also how much different people are willing to pay. So if there's more advertisers who are willing to pay a high amount, that does definitely drive up your cost per click. But there are those other elements. And the other core factor is the quality of your ads and the landing page. Now, this is also known as what we would call your quality score. What Google is trying to achieve here, ultimately they wanna match the most relevant ads to the most relevant landing pages. And this all comes back to the user's initial search. Now, the reason for why this is so important for Google is because if they continue to serve up poor quality ads, they know that ultimately people will stop clicking their ads and that's the way that Google gets paid. When I was talking about before about your bid, the amount of people who are bidding on the same similar keywords or the audiences or whatever you're trying to achieve in your campaign, that puts upward pressure on how much you're gonna be paying per click. The quality of your ads and your landing pages puts downward pressure. 
better. So it doesn't mean that if there's a whole heap of competition and other people have to pay $20 a click, if you've got better ads and landing pages, it's not gonna bring that cost down to a dollar, but it may save you sort of 10 to 20% on your cost per clicks if you've got highly relevant ads and landing pages. The next thing, and this is what's called current ad rank thresholds. Now for some of these next metrics, this is really coming around through Google introducing more automated learning and it's taking in some predictive elements. So what it's looking at here is these are the minimum standards that an ad must reach in order to be shown in the auction. And this comes back to what is in the auction. So there might be higher ad rank thresholds for different industries. So what it really comes down to is it really comes down to what your competitors are doing and what you always want to be looking at is that if that you've got better ads and better landing pages than your competitors, this is going to be a positive in your favor. Alternatively, if you've got competitors who have better quality ads and better quality landing pages, you are going to have to pay higher to get relevant clicks in that auction. What we're saying through here as well, the competitiveness of the auction, a simple way to think about it, more competition equals higher CPCs. Remember how I was saying before, Google was using more AI and automated learning. This is the other part which is becoming really important, the context of the user's search. What this takes into account, it takes into account the user's recent search terms. So nothing to do specifically with your ads, but what Google is doing here is it's taking into account what the user has been searching and how relevant that is to your ads and your landing pages. And then it takes it even further than that, and that is the expected impact of your ad assets and other ad formats. And what Google is looking at here is if Google believes that assets will increase the chance of a click, you're more likely to get a higher ad rank. What I really want to build this down, because this may all sound very confusing, you just need to remember the main objective for Google is to show the most relevant ads that are advertising the most relevant landing pages to the user's initial search. So when it comes to Google Ads, and I know this part of how the auction works changes all the time, but if you could just think through that last part of the screen that I showed you. If you can have relevant search ads, taking people through to relevant landing pages from their initial search inquiry, you're always going to be in the the topper part of your niche. So that's what I just really want you to focus on is success with Google Ads is really breaking down and looking at creating the most relevant ads with the most relevant landing pages for a user's search inquiry. Now the next part of what you need to understand about Google Ads is that yes, it's based on an auction, but you can also target your ad through different mechanisms. And that's through keywords, different demographics, different audiences, different locations, different times of the day, or even days of the week, different devices, so you could go to mobile only or desktop only. And then what is also becoming more important in Google Ads is your content placement. So different websites, YouTube channels, or even apps where your ads are showing. The thing that I love about Google Ads is that you can have a targeted ads campaign. So with Google Ads, you can go very broad, but then you can also go very specific. So let's just say, for example, you are selling some multivitamins and they're only for people over 40. So rather than just targeting it to anyone who searches in the terms multivitamins, you could put exclusions in there and really just set your campaign up so that your ads are only shown to people who are over the age of 40. And let's just say you want to target it for more regional cities that don't have large pharmacies or chemists that can buy these supplements very easily. You could even have a campaign targeting regional cities to people who are over 40. So the one thing that you want to be thinking about with Google Ads is thinking about who is your target audience? Who are the people that are going to be buying your products or booking in your services and you can create your campaign to spend the most amount of money in those targeted locations to those targeted demographics. But another thing that I mentioned at the end there is all about your content placements. If you're using more newer types of campaigns, that really targeted approach to Google Ads is more related to your search and your shopping and even your display campaigns. But for some of the newer types of campaigns, which are more broader, so your performance max and your demand gen campaigns, what really becomes important with those types of campaigns is where your ads are showing. And what I mean by that is your content placements. And you can see improved success by really monitoring and adding in extra exclusions. What I want you to think about is this. If you've run any Google Ads search campaigns, you know that the main optimization action that you can take is by adding in extra negative keywords to stop your searches appearing for 
unrelevant searches. You can do the same thing with content placements. If you're seeing that Google is showing your ads on websites that are not relevant, but are also just wasting ad spend, you can add them to exclusions so that you can improve the performance of your account. The third thing that you need to remember about Google ads is that campaigns are set at the budget level. Now, the reason for why this is so important is because when it comes to setting your budgets within Google ads, what you wanna do here is you wanna create what I call levers in your account. And you wanna be able to create those different levers so that you can focus your spending on the areas where you're seeing the greatest levels of success with Google ads. Now, there is some technical skill to get success with Google ads, but one of the easiest ways to improve the performance of any Google ads account is to increase the spending in the areas where you're seeing the most positive results and decrease the spending in the areas where you're seeing poor results. But a lot of people can't do that because they haven't created proper levers in their business. And that's why it becomes so important that you only wanna be advertising the same keywords or products or services to one set of audiences or locations. Now that doesn't mean that you don't have different campaigns targeting the same products and services or keywords. You just wanna make sure that you're never targeting the same keyword to the same location to the same audiences with the same messaging. The reason for why you don't wanna do that is because that then takes away your ability to use those levers to increase the spend on the areas that are performing well and decrease the spend on the areas that are not performing well. The way that I talk this through with different coaching clients or people that are part of my paid community is if you could think that Google Ads, the goal is to have one campaign. Now, that is never really gonna happen, but if you have that as your starting point, you need to then have a really good business case for why you're having extra campaigns. So every additional campaign you add, you need to think about why am I adding this campaign and why can't I just include it in my current campaign? Some really valid reasons for having multiple campaigns are is that you've got different locations. You wanna have different budgets for different locations or it could be for different traffic volumes. There are sometimes you might have some really low volume keywords which lead to a product or service with a really, really super high profit margin. So it makes sense to break that lower volume product or service into a separate campaign so that you can make sure that Google is spending money on that low volume search term. And then also too, when it comes to results, as I said, you might have some product groups, so different asset groups or ad groups, which are just getting really, really super high profit metrics, but a really low spend. Once again, maybe we wanna break that out to a separate campaign so you can force Google to spend more money in those high performing areas. And then finally, it comes down to that you can add in automated bidding strategies. And an automated bidding strategy is where you're really leveraging off Google's learning. So all the data that it's got, not only about your account, and your conversion history, but also about the user's search history, so the person who's currently completing that search. And you can leverage off that data so that you can see better results. As I said, at this level, I don't wanna go into too further details to uh, bidding strategies because we're gonna have a full video on bidding strategies. But I do just wanna let you know that that is the other core factor that you can include within your Google Ads account is by using automated bidding strategies like maximize conversions or maximize conversion value. Thank you for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Now remember, if you wanna get access to my Google Ads Optimization Checklist, make sure you follow the link in the description below. And if you wanna make sure that you never miss when I release these videos within the Get Google Ready playlist so that you know how to set up all of your campaigns and optimize your campaigns in the right way, make sure that you don't only subscribe, but you turn on that bell notification so you know when I release a new video. Thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you through the rest of these videos. See ya.